in a, a regular day. No, oh, got to hit the recorder. So welcome everybody. Uh, we're doing closing bell today with uh, Jeffrey Termeyer. He's a very good friend of ours here at Cyber Trade University. He's one of the gurus, part of our group over here at. Uh, at Media Pub, and uh, we had him here several times at CyberTree University, and we're always happy to have him, you know, but, you know, like everything else, we always like to get some really good feedback from all the traders, uh, especially all the traders I do trade with, and we know that, you know, with the market, how it's been reacting, especially today, it was like crappy, but there were a couple of things that did make some nice moves. I mean, for some of you that were in our trading room, there was some really nice shorts with Lyft, um, you know, uh, what else we had, uh, Uber and all that. And then it was some nice little rebounds. We saw some nice crashes, some nice, and listen, I know a lot of people get nervous, oh, you know, about shorting and stuff like that. And listen, whatever goes up must come down twice as fast. So don't be afraid. And let me tell you, the biggest thing you have to understand is when you trade in today's markets, you have to learn how to trade on both sides of the market. And that's why I, I, I have Jeffrey here because, you know, it's always nice to know a little bit about two different types of styles. Hey, listen, we all trade the same. I mean, trading psychologically is about 70%. We only trade about 30% difference. Now, uh, Jeff basically was going to cover is how to use the powerful market and math techniques that he's looking to trade in today's opportunities. His strategy is to use a set of pro profitable targets with stop losses, which is a huge thing that everybody wants to learn. Everybody wants to learn a little bit more about those stop losses and that's what he's going to cover. And he's going to show you how he scans the market live with, uh, in the opportunity with him, because that's what I really feel. I mean, listen, you want to have some skin in the game. You want to have some people that are trading with you live in the market. And that's where it comes about. So just to know a little bit about Jeffrey, and I know he'll tell you more than what I really know about him. I mean, I only know so much and as much as I'd like to know about Jeff, you know, I know we have a lot in common, but he, you know, he started. Echo Trading Systems grew his family account to about 1.4 million from starting it down to nothing. And he built it up pretty fast, pretty quickly. And, you know, and like he said, he likes to enjoy doing other things. He spends time as a farmer, as a civil engineer, he's even a scout leader, a husband, a father, which is amazing. Also a pilot and, which I would never do, is a beekeeper because I'm allergic to bees. Okay. So <laughs> just let everybody know that. I got stung twice. And I got to run around with a damn EpiPen, but um, but Jeff, I'll I'll leave that up to you. You ever get stung, Jeff? Oh, uh, you know, one time my veil was loose and uh, I got my wife picked thirty five stingers out of the top of my head up here. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, is that even possible? <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> I got it. I would look like the elephant man if that happened to me, or probably, you know. <laughs> In ICU for crying out loud. But anyway, Jeff, I don't want to take too much time. And and you know what? I think everyone's here looking forward to hearing from you and regarding about some of the stuff that you're talking about. SB, you know, and just let everybody know, Jeff was, you know, he, we, you know, one of my students a long, long time ago. And um, you know, yep. what's just great about it is that I'm just so happy that he became so successful and was able to do and find his own niche. And that's why I wanted to talk about. It. So Jeff, why don't you take it over from here and uh, everybody enjoy the presentation. If you got any questions, just throw them in the chat. I'll be happy to share them with you. Yeah, let's see. Make sure I get my right screen here shared. All right. Let me know in the chat. Should have a uh, little title screen in here about charting a course through the not a recession markets. <laughs> all there. All righty. Let's talk about it here. So um, I'm going to teach you how to anticipate market movement with just one line on your chart. Everybody wants to you know, have a relatively simple way. I'm going to give you that one line. I'll give you the code you can use in TradingView. And then, you know, by the end of the day, I'm going to give you a little offer to come join me and check me out. So I'm Jeffrey Turnmeyer. As Fausto said, gave me a little introduction there. I've been uh, at this whole game. I guess I started back in the third grade on paper trading, playing the stock market game. And a uh, kid on the bus had some money and bought this cool thing with some money he told me he made on dividends from like Pepsi, I think it was, maybe Coca-Cola, uh, one of the you know soda companies. And uh, at that point forward, I needed to know more about this. And so I got into the paper trading game, stock market. We actually traded with Scantron, fill out bubbles and mail them in. And uh, you get your account statement back and what you traded and how you were doing. It was real slow. And then, uh, you know, fast forward through 
the, the school years and uh, I turned 18, graduated, opened a real money trading account at E-Trade and knew nothing. And uh, then I started my journey on teaching myself how to trade. Didn't have any kind of Wall Street you know, background or anything like that. Um, met people like Fausto and uh, Rob Booker and other people along the way. And eventually I had some great success. Finally figured out something in the market that worked. And my friend Rob Booker asked me to come on with financial media company and teach other people how to do this. And it leads me to where I am today. So let me give you a little bit about how I do what I do and see if we can get you up to speed on how to do some of this yourself. So let's go to some charts here and we'll just jump right into it. So this is the NASDAQ here. I'm going to teach you about this roadmap line right here. This is this orange line coming down through here. The market tends to find resistance there and do the same sort of moves over and over. And it also tends to find support there and do the same kind of moves over and over. So right here is the market roadmap setup, whether this is bullish in this case for the CVS chart or bearish, I'm gonna teach you a little bit about how to do this. So this is what it is. First, we are looking for a price to break through that orange line, either up or down, make some kind of move away from the orange line for some period of time. This is a daily chart. So this was several weeks here. And then at some point it comes back down to the orange line. That's point number two. I'm gonna give you the code for the orange line and tell you all about it here in just a minute. That's my what I call the roadmap line. Now, point three is where price moves up away from the roadmap line. And this would be the most aggressive point right here. Usually I'm looking for a more conservative entry up in this area above the 618 retrace of that move down. And then you've got your exit targets up here at the 1272, 1618, or even the 272 extension way on out here. And that's the that's kind of the three primary exits. Now, the stop for this whole thing is going to be right down here below the roadmap line where you bounce. Now, just imagine flipping the whole thing over. It'd be the setup like we broke down through the roadmap line, came up, retested. Your stop would be above the roadmap line, and you would be trading short down to some of these extensions. And it's just standard fib, lo fib line extensions here. And like I said, I'm going to give you the code for this. So right here it is. Let me move the ad out of the way. This is on a free trading view account. So you can you can and quite possibly would be able to do this all on your own on a free trading view account. Now, if I blow this up a little bit, try to get it where it doesn't cut it off the screen. If you want a screenshot, I'll give you a second to uh, capture it right there. What you have as the roadmap line is the 144 EMA and the 169 EMA. Colored orange. Right there's the code. Should be able to see the screen share. It is being shared. Right there's the code. You want to screenshot it? You can type it in later if you want to. Or you can choose to join me and I will give you the code. <laughs> All right, just share about 10 more seconds. You can put the 144 and 169 EMAs in Thinkorswim and it'll work just the same. If you want to color it orange, it takes a little more code. Um, for those that choose to join me, I do have some Thinkorswim code. Just very simple EMAs. And um, I have a whole course on why it is this and all that stuff. We're not going to get too deep into it today. I'm going to show you the power of this thing and uh, do some take some requests and do some live chart analysis for you. All right, I'm going to zoom this back out so I can see the chart again. Now, the power of this thing. Look at this, I mean, right here. Found, you know, broke through, came back, poked just a little bit through, but then as soon as it came through, all the way down, again, came up back here in August and did the same sort of move. And right now the target is down here at the 1272 around 10,464, 10,500 roughly. Um, I, I'm actually looking for a reversal to take place any time now. Like we're in that zone where I was short up here, kind of booked my profits in here, and now I'm waiting for this reversal to shape up right in here. All right. Same sort of thing we can see on 
oil. And you might also recognize this pattern as like a head and shoulders type situation too. So we've bounced on oil right here and we've set it up against once more here. So I'm cautious that we can see yet another extension lower on oil. So everybody thinks oil is going super bullish. I'm not so sure. All right. If you want to type in the chat and, and uh, any kind of requests, I'm going to take some requests and we'll look at your chart and we'll see what you got. I, of course, have a list if, uh, if we're not finding stuff. On a bigger time frame, this one right here, CVE, has been running for a while. It's come back, kind of bounced one, two, three, four, five times now. If we see a breakout above this 22 level up here, I think we can see some extensions to 28, even 33 on the upside for CVE. All right, Apple. Now this one, definitely a little crazier here. It's kind of my expectation for Apple right now. Until it breaks down and pushes lower. Not really following the roadmap pattern on a daily chart. But if we pop up to the weekly, we may very well be trying to retrace to that weekly. And this works on all time frames. It looks like we're trying to get the weekly roadmap. It needs just to push a little bit lower. So 130 area could very well be hit. Right now, we're kind of holding in this wedge, though. All right. Other request is Tesla, TSLA. We are hitting the roadmap line right here on the weekly on Tesla. Expecting maybe a little bit more pullback. Find a little support in here, and we can launch off. Now, just to share, I do a 30 minutes of awesome chart analysis every Tuesday at 5. So I'll be doing that after this show, right live on YouTube. And these are where some of these predictions come from right here. This was a, a line I showed, you know, an arrow target I showed a couple weeks back. Looks like we're coming right into the target area. All right, Rivian, RVI. Is that R-I-V-N? Yeah, there we go. Don't have enough history on the weekly. Daily just. Now, let me give you a warning about IPOs. IPOs start out corrective and almost always go lower, significantly lower than their IPO price before they find a bottom and can turn bullish. This is, uh, it's not, a rule for every time, but it is the vast majority of new IPOs will start at corrective. Another example is coin. Start at very corrective, getting some lower prices. I actually have a lower target on coin if it does break down right here. Below this recent, these recent lows, we can see a push down into the 30 or even $20 area. All right. Any more requests? I know it's not a uh, not typical. You see a lot of you know somebody just take requests, but I'm willing to look at anything you want. We got lots of people here, so don't be afraid to shout it out in the chat. Yeah, even with Google's purchase, this is just a uh, it's just chart analysis. So fundamentals don't matter to me at all. Uber, look at that. Bouncing off the roadmap line, bounce off the roadmap line, extending lower. Couldn't quite even get there, extending lower. A little bit of that chop and then extending lower. So same pattern. Target would be, grab my tool here. Grab the fib tool, run it up. Looks like we could see a push down to the $17 area if we get extension lower on Uber. Another one that's uh, worked real well, Square. Couldn't quite get there. Has the same sort of pattern, just falling short and then pushing lower. And right now my target's down here around 48 on Square. 
All right, now we're getting some requests. There we go. DE, John Deere. Yeah, just kind of going sideways there, not really showing me a lot of pattern. Did break a little bullish, came back. So this could potentially be a breakout, but right now it's got a, it did touch down here on the weekly. So right now we have a kind of a weekly setup. I'll be looking for deer to break through, back up through so this 380 area right here, where it gets nice and bullish. It goes up to us like around this $500 area. Long term, long term, yeah, right around 500. All right, next up, NVDA. That one, I can tell you, is just hitting downside targets. Yep. Had this long standing kind of downtrend target here, 116 area. People uh, coming to 30 minutes of awesome that I do at 5 p.m. on Tuesdays, thought I was a little crazy saying it was going to 115. Right there's where it is. And looking for it to turn up. Um, it can find support here or it can push on down below 100 to 95 would be the next kind of target down here, 95, 96 area. So nothing great on that one right now. Payo, P A Y O. Yeah, that's a perfect. I'd be looking to book profit right now if you're long or protect your profit anyway. Came up to the first target around seven 770 roughly um 840 would be the next target up and then 997 above that but the higher you climb on this ladder the more likely you are to retrace back down to one of these lower levels from where you broke out before you can set up the next move so right there that one's already kind of played out right now until you get the next pullback roku that one's been absolutely murdered lately and my target is around 36 right now on Roku. Down right in there. Probably not what you wanted to hear. That one's been a long-term breakdown and retrace. Getting this, correcting this move it had from the 2020 low. We all know what happened back then. This high that it had in 2021. And we're kind of correcting that whole extension here. Back down to 36. All right. HYG, that's uh, bonds, right? Corporate bonds, yep. Get murderized here. Bounce right off the roadmap line. Looking to retest the lows, it looks like, from back here in 2020. Same pattern. Extension lower. Next stop would be... Yeah, we're right at finding support right at the the first target move. Let's zoom this back up. Find support right there. Extension down would be right around 69. 69.70, somewhere in that zone right down there. 69.16. All right, TMX. That looks like a hot mess, honestly. It's got no trend going on for almost a, well, a full year now. Just no trend at all. Just chop, chop up, chop down. I mean, if you wanted to trade the chop, you could potentially buy it. Put your stop just below the box here, maybe below the last low, back over here. And look for it to pop up here and definitely lock in your profit when it Ran to the top of the box. IWM is making a higher low. Now this one has a bigger story going on. Um, small caps tend to lead the market. And as we came up into the highs last year in 2021, while S&P 500 and NASDAQ were making higher highs most of the year, IWM was consolidating. Um, small caps were consolidating. We did get a little fake breakout here and then a crush down to a low they led the way the whole way down and right now they're kind of potentially making a higher low situation while s p 500 and nasdaq are making a lower low 
this can lead us out of the current situation we're in. So I'm on high alert, kind of watching this. If it does start breaking down, then it could lead to a longer term correction here. AMD also looks a lot like NVIDIA. Right down to the target, 57. 50, if this area won't hold right here, we could see a move down to this $45 area. So that was the target right in there. We break down out of that zone. 45 is going to be the next place where we have support. So, all right, SARK. 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 So, short innovation. Hmm. Interesting. This one doesn't have a long history. Missing the, uh, like I said, this these don't necessarily work without a lot of history, but I've drawn some stuff on here. Looked at it before. Can remove that. Get a pullback like this. I say if you get a daily close up in this, say 67, 68 area, we could potentially see a run higher. I'm guessing this is short arc fund. <laughs> Yeah, short arc. There is a potential to run higher there. All right, Invex. Novavax, that looks like well, pretty much bad right there. Didn't even hit the roadmap line there and pushing lower. Yeah, exceeding the targets. Um, it's in no man's land right there. Got to wait for something to shape up. There's a uh, pushing through. It can run down to this 13 area, but right now it's just kind of out in no man's land. Huge push down. So maybe related to the move up it did. Let's see if it's found any support off there. Yeah, find a little bit of support of the 618 retrace of this whole move up it's right in the neighborhood there. So there is potential for this to break back up out of here. Look for it to find some resistance at the roadmap line when it gets there. Probably bounce back down and then up out of there. All righty, Roblox, RBLX. Yeah, that's uh, looking for extension lower there. It was a three wave move up, one, two, three. So far, three wave down. Looks like that one can extend lower. It's probably not what you want to hear. 17. Looking forward to hold right in this 30, 31 area. Like if it can hold that 31 and go up right there, that's what I was just talking about on that Invax chart. Come up to here, retrace to the 618, hold and break up through. That can be bullish. If it doesn't hold that 618 and starts pushing down, I'd watch out for the 17 area down here. That's got once, twice, and pushing lower. So that'd be red alert for me right there with two. See these two right here. Rejection of the roadmap line and rejection of the roadmap line with a lower high. Feel like a red flag for me watching for a at least return to the low at 22, if not an extension lower to 17. All right. Yeah. Um, PLT is also a big downer right there. Finally hit my $100 target I was looking for. Also related to bonds. So I wouldn't look for too much more. It can push on down in 91, but that's going to take a lot more energy. Um, looks like we're off just a little bit to 99.79 here at post market. 79 right in that area. Yeah. But that's already hit my. Hundred dollar target area on bond on those TLT bonds, so twenty year treasuries. All right, DIS, yeah, sure thing. 
Disney. That one's gonna, I've got a target down here around 81 for Disney. Bounced right off the roadmap line there. Set up another extension and see if that lines up. Yep, that 81, 82 area right in there is the confluence of levels. All right, CHPT, charge point. Oh, trying to break through. It's got this long-term downtrend line that's been cooking for a while. We came up, kind of made a lower high, and then held that line, and then held that line, and then trying to break through, but haven't been able to do it so far. I'd say watch out for an extension lower one more time. Especially if we get a broader market breakdown. Yeah, right down to about the $7 area. Be careful, be cautious on that one. Right, MU. Everybody know the story on chips, right? Why they're getting beat up. It's not about a chip shortage. Right down to the box. Oops, move the wrong thing. Yeah, that one, looking forward to return to this box right here where we kind of consolidated post COVID. If we break through that, then we could, re we could revisit these lows down here. Right now, that's the support right there where we consolidated and found support through COVID in 21220. And if we break down through that, so I figured we would come revisit this box. And if we don't hold it, then we need to revisit the lows here around 30. So chip companies worldwide kind of prioritized making high-end chips because hot demand, right? Where can you make the most money? prioritize the high-end chips where the profit margins are the biggest. Now, all of a sudden, 2022 rocks along and high-end chips kind of quit being in high demand. And then September 15th rolls along and the bombshell drops. All of a sudden, Ethereum mining goes proof of stake. Demand for GPUs dries up. That killed AMD and NVIDIA um, long before the Proof of stake switch. Smart people were already moving out of mining Ethereum, get away from it, and uh, and then we had the uh, global not a recession, and this is all combining together to, you know, just culminating together. I guess you would say that they're sitting on a stockpile of high end chips that they're not able to move, and you know what? All the low-end chips that they deprioritize making are still in high demand and somewhat of a shortage, but they're lower margin items. So there's lots of things like thousands of Ford trucks or you know other vehicles sitting around waiting for chips, commodity chips, not high-end chips. And those are low margin products that are not haven't been produced in favor of higher-end chips. So that's kind of the, the long and the short of the whole chip, high-end chip industry, why these things are getting murderized. That one came down right to my target, like that 178, can extend down to 163. This is a semiconductor ETF. Another semiconductor TSM. Yeah, right down. Extension target on that one, 56 on the low side. All right, TNXP. That looks pretty bad right there. Um, zero is the bottom. I don't think it's going to go negative like oil. So
bounce off the run map line, crushed. Bounce off the run map line, crush. You only got 49 cents left to zero, so. And then SNDO. Sundial, yeah. that one's a, it's a casualty of the low barrier to entry for the marijuana industry. Bounce off, bounce off, bounce off, pushing lower. Looks like 175 next stop. All right, any more requests? Yes, no, maybe so. All right, check it out right here, jeffreytrader.com slash YouTube. I'll be on at five o'clock. So FSLR, pop back over, FSLR. And that one's uh, reaching up now. Solar companies are pretty much on a run here. FSLR, looking for an extension, came up just a little short, like Sun Run. Doing a little pullback here for the next potential breakout. Yeah. AL. American Airlines, that one looks pretty bad. Looks like it's pushing lower at the lows. You get extension lower here. Move a couple of these from a few weeks ago. Pop that on like that. Yeah, that's uh, $11 next stop, American Airlines. I am UX. Nice pop today. Doesn't give me a lot to work with. That can reverse. Like a three wave up, a higher low. Right into, right below the long-term consolidation over here. Got to get above that. Back above 13, that could be a, a good one. It's probably a biotech based on that name. You know, pharmaceuticals. Be cautious on those. They act erratically. They can break the chart patterns very easily. All right, BX. Extension lower would be 74 on that one. Blackstone. Yeah. The road, well, when you don't have uh, something cooking for the roadmap, this one right here, bouncing, bouncing, extending lower. It's a whole combination. The roadmap does rely on, when I showed you this right here, the roadmap line does use fibs for targets and extensions and stops. So it's a whole process. The one line is just the roadmap line though. It's kind of the basis. Yeah. Code one more time right here. Take your screenshot. Give me 10 seconds. And then I'm gonna wrap this up here. All righty. So this market, obviously tough not to crack. You know, I showed you bullish cases, bearish cases. Whether you're a swing trader, day trader, or a Forex or futures fanatic, it can be tough to find anything stable right now. Even crypto is pretty tough. Like last week, for example, one day you think maybe we're going to get a reversal, you know, like a 230 point run in S&P 500, and then we crush it, right? Next few days, we just crushed that gain. So it doesn't seem that there's any solid ground to stand on out here and i bet you know how it feels right i mean get in a trade and get ripped so this year quick hitter investments can be kind of dangerous i mean unless you got a plan something like fausto's plan and so far this whole thing is only getting started because we know the cpi is coming out on thursday this week and there are two more fed meetings this year so two more chances to raise the interest rates and cause havoc in the markets. Plus, if you didn't know, the election's coming up next month. There are just a ton of market shocks coming in the next few months. These shocks create volatility, making the shortest term trading a massive headache. So what's the solution out there? We turn things on their head. We look for long-term instead of short-term, and we buy stocks that pay us to own them. Yes, I'm talking about dividend stocks, but not the expensive kind that Warren Buffett preaches about out there. 
Now, I've, I've curated a list of over 135 dividend stocks that have three things going for them, and then high yield. So they're dirt cheap to purchase. You're usually less than 20 bucks, a lot of them. They have a high dividend yield, paying six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent dividend yields. And a lot of them have a chart pattern, like I just showed you today, that are set to go up long term. These 135 stocks are a unique outlier in the market, a small and overlooked group of high value investments that pay you to own them, and they pay handsomely. That means that the longer you hold them, the cheaper they get because they just keep pumping out dividends. And some of them pay even monthly. If you hold them long enough, you'll basically have purchased them for free. But there's one more step that makes this portfolio so, pow so powerful. I use my special curated indicator, the market roadmap that I've shown you here today to help me identify which of these stocks is most likely to climb higher. So each month, I use a special roadmap line to identify one of these high-yield stocks that I think might shoot higher. And then I send that out to my subscribers in a program that I call Double Dip Trades. See, the first dip is that potential bull run, and the second dip are those super high-pan dividends. But buying stocks that pay you to own them and holding them, they climb higher over time. It's kind of like the perfect double dip in the markets. Over time, you're building a portfolio of stocks that were pretty inexpensive to begin with, paying you to own them, and you can believe that will potentially continue to be more valuable in the future. So last week, I released my latest Double Dip Trade report. This loaded report comes with the trade pick right in there, a chart. Tells you where I'm getting in. I actually buy every single one of these. Then we give you a dividend portfolio update of all the ones we're holding, all the ones we've ever bought, how they're, you know, how they're standing, and then a ton of market analysis for where the market's going to go next. Prepare you for the month ahead, the weeks ahead, and what I think in big picture. So it's, it's probably the monthly publication that I'm most proud of. I put a lot of work into it every month, but I would love even more is the community. You know, the fact that the part I love even more is the community of traders I built with double dip trades inside Discord. So just like Fausto and CTU, I believe that building a family of traders is incredibly important. And I have over 1,200 people in my little community every day. That's why I'm one of the first traders I know of to launch a full exclusive Discord community for stock and options traders. It's a text platform. My students and traders, well, you get to ask me questions, communicate with other traders and me just about any time and help everybody grow work together and double dip trades is your ticket into that community so i've loaded as much value as i can in this program it's perfect for building a portfolio of low-cost stocks to own setting up a small nest egg for kids or grandkids just letting it grow building a minuscule account by buying one share of one stock at a time even and so much more so I've slashed the price down to one year of double dip trades to just $49. I'm opening up a slot for everyone who's joined me here this afternoon. But there's one more thing I want to tell you about before I share the link, because I think now is actually the ideal time to join double dip trades. See, I believe that the market is setting up for a short squeeze of all short squeezes. It's out here. That means in the very near future, for a brief period of time, the markets will skyrocket irrationally carrying stocks like my high yield watch list higher along the way. It's right here in the charts. That's a monthly chart right there on the S&P 500, comparing the previous pullback to the current one. As the rising tide raises all ships, and if the market plays out like kind of like I expect, the time is now to get in on these double dip trades. So if you've been wondering how to escape the day-to-day -day rat race and set up a long-term portfolio, you can just walk away from of stocks that pay you to own them. Now is your chance to join me in Double Dip Trades. Go to jeffreytrader.com slash DDT or call 855-454-0816 to talk to my concierge team of professionals that can help you get started today. Any questions? So Jeff, the link is up there for everybody to uh, click on really quick. It's Yeah. Right. Um, yep. right there, yeah. Right there on the right. So Jeff, when uh, got it on the I chat? 
I used to get these questions all the time. So when could they actually start? Could they put this, I say they're not ready to start immediately. Can they put it on hold? Oh, you can, I mean, you can put it on hold. You can buy right now and get the report and read it over and make your plan to get in when you got, I, I think the pick for this month was uh, under 20 bucks. So you got a 20 buck account. You can get started with this, buy one share and just start riding the dividends. You see, I say that all the time. I tell everybody that all the time. I mean, like, Everybody thinks you need so much money to do this. And you know, you know, being when I started trading and you were there, I mean, listen, we just started being little kids. Great traders surround themselves with great traders. And I just tell them, like, listen, you don't need a lot of money to do this. I mean, what is this, $49? It's a dirt cheap. You yeah. know what I mean? What's the, wor what's the <laughs> worst thing that could happen? You learn something? Yeah, people, hey, That's people, you, you know people that used to charge $10,000 just to get you started. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And you and, know what? Uh, that, that's probably a good deal, depending, you know, like anything else. But like, you know, you got to start somewhere, you know, nothing is right. Just, time is money. I mean, staff is money. And like, you want to make sure you got to get your feet wet. So $49, everyone, it's a damn steal. I mean, get in there, click on that damn thing, call them up, get registered. <laughs> but $49, $49. That's like, going to give you a whole year, a whole year of this. <laughs> for a year. Okay. Come on. $49. Listen, um, the market, a lot of people are getting really nervous, Jeff. You know what's happening with, with the market here. And like, even today, like, I don't like when we get this little teeter tottering. And now we saw what happened last week because, you know, with, with the job reports. And then they talked about right away, boom, red flags came up, interest rates are going to go higher. And I keep telling everybody, you know, their people look at this as a negative, you know, like, oh, I can't get involved, you know. They're going to raise it. The market's going down. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is why we do this. We get involved because <laughs> we want volatility. Let this market crash. Yeah. Listen, you know about short squeezes. We deal with it all the time. Why not? You got to get in it. Like, and, you know, and, and listen, if you're one of my students, that little couple of things that you're going to learn from Jeff, you know, and with me and everybody else, you put it together, you're going to find your own little niche, you know, but you got to get that report for crying out loud. I mean, I don't know what. What's holding you back? Hey. Get sign up, forty nine dollars. Damn, you know I'm all over. Plus, that you thing. get in my my you get in my live trade room in Discord as part of this too, which uh, I go every every day. I'm in there chatting. Um, last week I called a three hundred percent up and a three hundred percent down trade as we rode the market up and back down. So people can't even see three percent a year. Well, actually, no, I take that back. You actually can. You get a CD now at three percent. <laughs> <laughs> With, with, now they raised it so high and people i'm getting people thinking about like wow like what well, i was only getting a half a percent on a money market now they're paying almost four like but i mean listen we're doing this on a daily basis sometimes so but you know what you got to be prepared you really got to be prepared um i mean jeff you've been around a long time as long as i've been around and we've seen some of the biggest catastrophes i always tell everybody this and i, I say it to all my people in the trade world if we're if we're still around this long and we're still in this business, we're doing something right. You know what I mean? I mean, when it comes hey. down to it. So I got started in the dot com bust. I mean, that was that was where I got started. You know, right when I turned 18 was the the dot com bust. So that was like trial by fire. <laughs> and right. I'm still here. <laughs> and and that and that was and and you know what? Sometimes it takes a crash like that to really learn. You know, I always tell everybody you have to learn how to you like when I teach my students, I tell them the first thing. I teach you how to lose money because if you know why you lost money, you're not going to do that again, you know? And by you being around that long and, and seeing what happened there, you're like, okay, whatever. Like, you know, it, shit happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whatever it is, <laughs> can't get upset about it. You just got to make sure that you didn't go out there and went all in. You know what I mean? You got to trade smart. Yeah. But that discord room is a gotta phenomenal protect room. Protect your downside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. And by the way, anyone have any questions? Does this seem like the E-mini fives and 13 users uh, in the in the code? Yeah, I turned them off just for simplicity during the, the presentation. Um, if you want to know more about it, come join me. I'll, I'll teach you more about it. And Carl has a question. Is this price in U.S. dollars? I answered that in the chat. Yes, it's uh, U.S. dollars. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? We, 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 will, we will take 49 Bitcoins. If you had that, yeah, I'll take forty nine bitcoins. <laughs> yeah, forty nine bitcoins. If we bring it up, absolutely. 
All right. Well, listen, Jeff, thank you. So, thank you so much. If anyone has any questions, you got his email there. You got registered. Don't waste your time. Take the $49. We're going to send you guys also another email and a text message if you want to register, just to keep reminding you. And I'm going to be all over you because if you don't register, you got, I mean, listen, you got to get your head examined. Jeff, you, you know, I, I would never have Jeff on here if I didn't think he had to offer was any of value. And listen, he's obviously proved himself. He made his family a lot of money. You know, he's got a lot of hobbies like I do and some are like you do. We're all like in the same part of it. We're not going out there and buying, you know, table service, you know, and flying Learjets. But we're sitting there. We want to have a nice, comfortable life. So go out there and make that vessel. So, Jeff, thank you so much for being here. And go get those yep. tickets, like I told you. Go get that doctor letter I told you about. <laughs> all right? And, uh, and everybody else, we'll look forward to seeing you uh, in the morning trading room. Carl says, I joined. Good. I'm all glad right. to hear that. There you go. Keep going, everybody. And right in the chat, in the I chat, I threw my uh, YouTube link. I'm going live at five here in about 10 minutes. Um, I'll take more more requests and uh, keep the party going. So yeah, absolutely. Link's right wow. here under me too. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, I'll see you later. Thanks for coming. Enjoy your event a little bit later. Yeah. And look forward to having you back. And don't forget everybody to register for it. Good luck, everybody.